Hi guys. So what we're going to do is um, we took a look at some of the sort of concepts and principles of um, dart manipulation, seam manipulation, and adding sort of using slash and spread to add basic flares and fullness. But we took a look at it sort of conceptually on the board. So what I want to do now is I want to head on over um, to M119 and take a look at how we utilize these techniques in Optitex. Um, so again, uh, the previous videos were just sort of explaining the sort of concept, whether it be in a pattern software, um, you know, pattern drafting software like uh, Optitex, or even on paper with rulers and things like that. It's just sort of the concept of it. But let's see how we can utilize um, each technique in Optitex. Uh, because of course the concept stays the same, but We'll have to look at some different tools and uh, methods of executing our manipulations. So let's th let the screen uh, pop up. And again, we're going to focus in on skirts. Okie dokie. So here we have our finished skirt sloper, and of course I'm just going to do the usual, open up my window a little bit, and switch of course to inches, which should be old hat by now. And um, let's take a look at the back first. Um, so the first thing we kind of went over is how to make two darts into one dart. So I'm going to zoom in on the waist because, of course, we're going to be working up here. And so as we know from drafting the skirt, each of these guys is one inch. So there's one inch there, or about one inch. There's our one inch there. So what we have to remember um, from our theory is so long as we um, keep the dart intake consistent, we can divide it up however many times that we want. So remember, this is in total a two inch dart intake. So let's put these two darts into one. And let's understand where that sort of point of fullness is. And remember that in our back, our point of fullness is a little bit wider and more forgiving than maybe a dart apex. So we're going for this sort of general area here. And of course, we can always put a little bit of a point there. So if I go, and add point, not point on contour, because it's not a contour point, but just add point. And let's say I'm going to add it, you know, about right here. Oops. I wanted an internal point, so maybe I'll do it right like this. So we'll just draft one in. And again, this is going to just be sort of a guide on, you know, where I should be pointing um, my, my darts. And again, um, I, so they don't have to be exactly to this point, but they should generally be going into this area. Okay, anywho. So as we know, all I need to do is to make these two darts into one dart is to make another dart with a two inch width. So I'm going to go ahead and so I can make sure that I am measuring correctly. I'm going to make sure that no grading point is in my way. So these were our original points for the dart, so I'm going to turn off their grading so they do not factor into any measurements that I might take. Let's just do a multiple select there. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to find out where I want my new dart. Maybe I want my dart exactly in the middle here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a point on contour that's going to serve for uh, my middle dart. It's, and when the dart closes, this is where the line um, is sort of going to come to. It's, well, it's going to come to the first point, but I need a little idea of where it's going to be. Um, so let's go ahead and add point on contour. And I'm going to hold my Alt key. And since I want this dart in the middle of my waist, I'm going to place a point in the middle of the waist. So I'm going to use my proportionate value. 50-50, uh, so 50% on this side, 50% on that side. And of course, we should get two equal numbers that um, equal our total waist right here. Oh, and it didn't, didn't grade it, so I do want it graded. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a, uh, two more points one inch away on either side, which again is going to give me a total um, two inch dart. Right, because if we had two darts each with a one inch intake, we add them together and we get two inches. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in my dart and I'm going to keep it the same length. As you remember, it was five uh, and a half inches. So let's keep that the same. Right there. So easy, easy. We have now a dart, one dart from two darts. Um, instead of you know two, so one from uh, one from two, and again we're maintaining that fit. It is the same fit. We haven't made the waist any smaller. We haven't made the sort of bulge out around the hip any bigger or smaller for that matter. Um, and again, so long as we keep this same dart pointing toward the general area of fullness, um, the shape of the curve and fullness that the dart creates is also the same. So let's go ahead and do another one. Um, so instead of making fewer darts, let's make more darts. Um, and I'm going to do four darts, um, just because the math is easy, because we have two inches, and two inches divided four ways is easy. So we'll have four half-inch darts. Remember, I can do as many or as few darts as I would like, just so long as um, I'm keeping the overall intake the same. And again, I want to just go and hit these points and uh, turn off their grading. So any measurements that I do, I'm going to keep it. Now at this point, you might want to just start deleting some of these points because we're getting, it's getting to be a little messy up here on the waistband, or waistline, I should say. So here we are. Now let's do about four darts. And um, so we have, let's see how much room we have to play with. Okay, about eight and a half inches. So let's keep it in about like the middle four inches here-ish. So I'm gonna start my first one about two inches in. And this would be my, right, previous. I wanna make sure these are all grading because I wanna measure one, you know, um, in a sequence. And I'm going to make this half an inch, right, because we're going to do four darts, and four darts at half an inch will total our two-inch intake. And let's think about how much we want in between. Um, I'll do half an inch in between as well. That'll give me a good sort of four-inch middle. So we'll, we'll just go, we'll get into a little bit of a rhythm, placing them all about a half inch apart. Two darts. Three darts and last one. A little extra room over here, so if I wanted to shift those over a bit, I could, but you don't have to, again, as so long as they're pointing here. So now I'm going to have one, two, three, four darts. So let's go ahead and put them in. And again, they're all going to be the same width. And I want to start to kind of point them. 
So I'm going to hold the shift key down, which will allow me to kind of angle them a little bit like this. And oh, I was pretty close to that five and a half inches. Look at that. But let's snap it to it a nice five and a half. Let's keep them kind of all the same angle. Fix the dark depth to again that five and a half inches we want. Okey doke. And one more. So there's our four darts instead of one, instead of two, instead of three. <laughs> and again, so long we have maintained that dart intake, so it is still in total uh, two inches. So again, our waistline is not too big, it's not too small, it's the perfect size. We're still taking it in up here, the amount that we need to take it in, and we're still creating that fullness down here at the hip. Okay. So that goes, uh, basically covers how to reduce or multiply darts in OptiTex. Let's take a look, quick look at the front and go over eliminating darts in the front. Well, OptiTex has a really, really great tool and sort of technique for eliminating the darts in front. Um, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to select both darts. You can do one at a time, but if you want to select both of them, you can hit the shift key to select both of them. Now be careful when you're selecting your darts. You have to hit like really here at the tip. It won't let me select it up here or wherever else. You got to go right at the tip and um, when it turns red, that means you're in the right location. So go ahead and just give it a click and it will um, give you this little diamond shape here as well as a sort of dash line um, around it. Now that my darts are highlighted, I'm going to go to Tools, and this, this function is kind of hiding here in the Tool menu. I'm going to go to Dart, and I want to close the darts. This one sometimes works, but go to this one um, first, and if you ever want to close and then reopen your darts, say you just want to see what it looks like closed, this is where you would go to reopen your darts as well. But right now we're just going to close the darts here. This one tends to work a little bit better, but you can play around with the two different um, closed dart options, see what works for you. And it's going to sort of ask me, you know, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to move these centers? Whatever this says, it's, it's just it's fine because we're going to delete away the darts when we're done. So boop, it squished it closed. And now um, since they're both selected, I can just hit delete. And there I go. Now I have a skirt. Um, that uh, I have closed the darts and I have eliminated the darts on the front. Now, I have to be a little careful when using this tool because you see right here, my waist, or I'm sorry, my hip line got a little small. So let's fix it. I'm gonna zoom in right here like this. And what I want to do is I want to align, so this full line is my hip, so I want, oh, it's kind of still attached. So I'm going to use my move point tool to grab this hip point and bring it back out, okay? Now if I need to round out my hip a little bit more by using doing that, using my move point tool, I can. And um, let's also make sure that it didn't go too far out on the other side which I can always fix, of course, by bringing it here. So I can give it a quick measure and compare it to my measurement chart. If I can remember where I put my measurement chart. <laughs> I think it's right here. So we should be looking at that hip arc plus a half an inch. So let's see where we're at. Front. Okay. We're still a little short, we don't have that E, so I need to, um, again, bring this out a little bit. So I'm going to use my move point tool again, and just bring that out. 
Okie dokie. And we can probably sort of shift this because we don't, I don't like this angle here. Remember, uh, this a lot of times it's going to be on fold. So I don't want any of this to really happen. So what I want to do too is uh, use my move point tool. Sort of bring this out here like this. And we can always take that off here a little bit if we need to cut it off. Now, if that seems a little bit too fidgety for you, um, we can uh, cut off from the side seam. So let me go back a little ways and show you another way of doing that. Okay, so here we are back with our two darts. And let's say I'm going to sort of split the difference because that mutated my other one too much. Um, I got two points here. I think it's going to be easier if I just have one. So I'm going to delete one of those because one of them did not matter. Now again, oh, I kind of want to show you something uh, too. So before I cut, I should have taken a measurement or before I, just to make sure that I'm getting um, the length that I want. Now what's handy dandy about, I've showed you this in the Optitext Basics um, whenever you're doing a curve line, uh, but I didn't mention the fact that it doesn't account for the dart intake. Optitext knows that this is negative space, so in this measurement, it's not including the darts. So that means that this is my resulting waste minus the darts. So this is what I'm going to be looking for when I get rid of the darts. So let's try something. Let's go ahead and I remember this was about 5 eighths width, 5 eighths like that, 0.62. And I'm going to cut one of them out of the side seam here. So let's zoom in. And I'm going to drag down a guideline because I want to end my cut about at the same level. And let's hold the Alt key. So I'm going to go in that 5 eighths inch. going to kind of go in and I'm going to just, you know, kind of curve it a little bit. And again, I'm not really, I'm kind of going doing this by eye. Now that looks a little weird, but we can fix it later. I'm going to get rid of this. Point, so I can round that hip a little bit more so it doesn't look quite so awkward. And now what I'm going to do is that accounted for one dart, so I'm going to take it, highlight the dart, and just delete it. Okay? Now I'm going to go back, and since we only have one dart to close, we probably won't skew it quite as much, so I'm going to go ahead and close this one, and okie dokie, let's see how that worked out. Probably skewed it a little bit, but we'll have a lot less fixing to do. So again, I do have to kind of move out my hip a little bit here and fix these guys here so I don't get this weird shape. Still get that nice kind of hip curve. And what I'm going to do is measure. I'll take out this dart. Now is this long enough? Do you remember what it was? Yeah, looks good. Okay. So it should be okay. You can sort of just either delete that or move the that endpoint back in. As long as we're keeping center front straight. Okay, so that's how you would eliminate the darts on front. And remember, you can eliminate the darts on front, but you cannot, not, 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 not eliminate darts on back. Unless, of course, you're putting the fit into seaming. And speaking of, let's go ahead and do some uh, seaming. Now, I'm going to move backwards. Let's see. Do, 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 till we get about one dart in back. 
Um, if you're doing basic seaming, like princess seams, oh, is that? Okay, so that's as much as we got, so I'm going to reopen it. And redo my one dart. Now let's do, um, we did first the princess seam, which of course is one of the easiest and most simple um, seam manipulations. Um, but of course to do that it's one seam, not two seams, so I want to go ahead and um, do what I did before and place both of these darts in one dart. So make one dart instead of two darts. So I'm just going to go ahead and toggle the grading off. And I'm going to put the dart where I want the seam to be. So let's assume I want it right in the middle, just like I did the dart before. So we're going to make it the same way as we made um, that uh, uh, previous one dart. I should have ended with that instead of started with it. OK, um, let's create the dart. And I can shift it here, too, if, depending on what I want the seam to do. Just make sure that it goes through this point here, this sort of general middle full hip point. All right, and I'm going to keep it the same depth as we need it to be. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to cut out the dart using the cut piece tool. And I can go ahead and take it out and delete it with that arrow tool. Now sometimes bits of your darts like remain hidden. Looks like, see, right if I click it, it's highlighting like the dart. So just to keep clean, uh, make sure that you delete away all sort of remaining parts of your dart. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit because we're going to create the rest of our princess seam, which is uh, very simply done by cutting from the tip of the dart down to the hem. And again, I can do anything I want here. I can zigzag it, curve it around. Maybe I'll do it, um, you know, a little bit kind of curved or whatever, something like that. There we go. Just a little, a little something. And there we are. That's my princess seam. This would be my center back seam. This is my princess seam or my side back seam. Uh, and the princess seam is in the middle. So center back, side back, and then we get this sort of princess seam cut in the middle there. And again, just to sort of uh, re-illustrate, um, from this point, I can really do anything. So I'm gonna just, just disable this because I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm not really doing it by measurements. If I was, you know, obviously I'd need that box, but if I wanted to do something like this, that's fine. I can do anything I want with that seam, uh, so long as it's coming from the tip of that dart, so long as the dart is being cut out. And, you know, we have again um, a sort of variation of a princess seam, a jig jaggedy princess seam. And there we are. So very, very simple, very, very easy. Lots of things you can do with your um, seam manipulations like that. So that's our basic princess seam. Um, now let's go over our basic uh, flare. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you sort of two versions. I'm going to go over the main, uh, making a, a flare skirt out of the sloper, and then maybe making a little uh, cut cutting some off and making a little flounce sort of trim. Um, so probably the most easy in the back, actually the most easy is to, and especially to keep it even, is to go ahead and go back to the original, which has the two darts. So we're just going to do that. And um, just for um, easiness sake, I'm going to go ahead and crop the skirt down to make it a little shorter. Um, this is just going to help keep it in view 
and the easiest way to crop yours and this is of course remember that our skirt sloper is um, full length so waist to ankle so you know let's say I want to do a oh I don't know a knee length skirt so actually this is a good little tangent to get on um, how do we proportionately and accurately cut down our skirts depending on what length we want it so um, no matter what we're doing if we want a shorter skirt um, that length is not going to be all the way down to the ankle um, cropping the skirt is going to be one of the first things that you do so here's the waistline right okay so that's the full part of the hip so keep that in mind this is our ankle okay so I'm going to drag down these guidelines to sort of show you uh, at what different lengths so halfway between your hip and your ankle is your knee so I'm going to drop that and you can do it very exactly with the uh, placing points with the proportion but I'm just going to sort of generally do it so one half between the ankle and the hip is the knee one half between the knee and the ankle it's like mid calf it's kind of like your capri length pant length and uh, halfway between uh, hip and knee it's about mid thigh and uh, that's about as short as we get I mean depending on how daring you want your um, clothing to be of course um, for this class I wouldn't go too much above your uh, sort of mid thigh there it does start to get because remember this is not the crotch level the crotch level will be you know about like right here so let's go let's give her just you know a few inches between the crotch and the hem uh, to be decent uh, so you know this is going to be a little bit um, more important moving on when you guys go ahead and do your own uh, skirt designs uh, because of course you can make it whatever length you want and these are just sort of guidelines on how to crop it okay anyway so let's clear out these guidelines So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it at about knee length. And again, I don't really care how long it is. Um, I'm, as this is just an example. So just to make it even, I know it's even down here. I'm just going to drop down a guideline and cut along the guideline just to, to make it go quickly. But of course, if you're doing it for real, and you, especially if you have a specific length that you need it to be, you would, of course, measure it. But just for demo, I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut all right now I don't need these guys anymore because they're no longer be part of my skirt and what I want to do now let's just get away from the guideline since I don't need it anymore and zoom in on this guy here let's make this a flared skirt so this is our back again and I'm going to start the same way as if I were making a princess seam, which is to be uh, cutting out the darts. So I'm going to cut out the darts. And we can get rid of the little dart pieces that were cut out. And now what I'm going to do is uh, sort of follow along uh, with the princess seam method and cut from the tip of the darts straight down to the hem. It's going to give me three little panels here. Okay, I'm going to keep that center back piece on grain so straight. And what I need to do now is rotate the rest of the pieces. So I'm going to use my rotate piece tool, keyboard shortcut R, click on this upper corner. And what I want to do is I want to rotate it at least enough to match this line. So I want this line here to match this line here. So let me show you what I mean by that. And we'll get into the to angle degrees in a minute. But I want to basically rotate the piece to close the dart. So that's enough. It's actually it's a little bit more than I need. Ooh, let's. No, I don't 
especially don't want it to be overlapping. So I'm going to zoom in really close so you can see what I'm doing. What I want is I want this line and this line to kind of meet. So if it's not going to snap. So see how it's a little bit of more space in here? Extra space is fine. It's just going to give you extra fullness. Um, what I'm showing you is really the minimum amount of fullness um, that you can that you need to uh, eliminate the darts and create a flare skirt. Because of course that's what we're doing here is we're eliminating any, eliminating any darts and seams. And of course we can do that um, because of the extra fullness that is created when we make the flare. We're not creating that kind of fitted close to the body shape, we're just creating kind of flares and things uh, that come out. It looks like I've got a spare line here so let's just delete that. I don't need any Thing, mucking up my workspace. Now this looks good. I want to just double check right up here because I don't want any overlap. It's a little bit of overlap here. It's probably negligible, but just to be on the safe side, let's adjust my pieces so there's no overlap. Overlap is bad because if I had too much overlap here, that'll make the waist too small um, or here or anything else like that. Let's zoom back out again. And one more time. Let's finish up with our last piece. Now remember, I can, I'm going to show you a, a more full version after this. This is the minimum amount of spread that is needed. I'm just going to sort of get it started and then adjust when we bring it over here. Actually, that looks pretty good. Let's zoom in real close, make sure I'm not overlapping. It looks like I got a wee bit of overlap. There we go. And again, so um, just like before, this little bit of a gap, that's fine. I'm just adding a little bit of extra ease. In fact, we can take that to a maximum. I can close it so it's touching, but not overlap. But I'm gonna say that looks pretty good for right now. So let's zoom out and finish it. So this is not our finished piece. This is just our template for our finished piece. What I'm gonna do is, um, now I'm going to select the pieces and protect them. And this is kind of like creating a new layer and locking the under layer in Illustrator or Photoshop. And it's going to allow me to draw on top, draft on top of these shapes without changing them and without connecting the draft line to the original shapes. So what I'm going to do is you can right click on a, the piece you want to protect, go to attributes, and the top little bar here, protect, you're going to um, go ahead and click it. And you'll know it's protected, it's very obvious because of course you get those little twill lines um, throughout the piece. So let's go ahead and protect the other pieces. And now that they're all protected, I can go ahead and start drafting. So I'm going to grab my draft tool, and it doesn't matter where you start, but you're going to go ahead and just draft all the way around your piece. Now the first thing OptiText is going to ask you is if you want to remove the protection. Since you're drawing on it, it's thinking, oh, maybe you want to make a, a difference with uh, this piece. But of course you don't. I mean, that's the whole reason we just put on the protection. So say no. It might also ask you in some areas if you want to snap to a contour. Say no to that as well. Hold shift to make a nice curved waistline. When you get these points. So this, do 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 nope. I don't want this snapped anywhere. And let's not forget that because I do still want a bit of a hip, especially since this is minimal fullness. We can start to eliminate those kind of hip curves when we get super wide and just make it straight. And of course we want a nice curved bottom as well. And when I go all the way around the figure, um, it should prompt you to uh, finish digitizing, which of course I do want to because I've done the whole shape, say yes. And uh, what should happen is you get a new piece with a new grain that you can pull off of your template piece 
and this is your flared skirt for your back, of course, because we drafted it from the back pieces. All we got to do is uh, fix the grain and label it and add some seam allowance and all that good stuff, which we'll get into later. Um, but that is how we do a simple flared skirt uh, from the sloper. Uh, the technique for the front is the same, um, just because the darts are a little bit smaller on the front. Um, mm -mm -mm. You might want to uh, pick them out a little bit more or else the fullness on front will be uh, a little bit less than the one on back. So uh, what I mean is because this is smaller, the pieces are going to get rotated less, which means you're going to get less flare in the front. Uh, which is fine. You don't need as much flare in front because we're not as curvy in front. Um, but if I was to put that together, I would just have a flare skirt whose fullness is a little bit uneven from front to back. Again, it's not wrong. Um, we just tend to like to keep equal amounts of fullness in the front and the back. Okay. Now I just want to show one other variation of this um, before we move on to the little flounce. So um, let's move back. So here's this, and we can actually let's keep this for comparison. So this is a flare skirt with the minimum amount of flare to eliminate our darts and seams up here. Minimum, minimum. But let's say we're not about minimums. Let's say we're about um, a lot of fullness and also about maybe maximums. So let's take a look at the maps, maximums as well. So like I said, um, let's go ahead and unprotect these pieces so I can just kind of move them around a little bit. Um, again, our back skirt is always going to stay on grain, so I'm not going to change that at all. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my rotate piece tool and start to swing these out more. So let's do, again, I want to kind of keep it even. Okay, so 16, let's say, okay. So this I'm going to do if I want to keep it even, if that was a 16. Actually, well, let's, let's just see how it looks. So now I'm going to match up, because it's always important we keep the waist the same. So waist, we want to keep the waist um, the same length. And let's just make sure I have that. Very good. Excellent. And do do do. Okay, so this is fine, but we want to keep again for for even fullness. I want to keep these distances, these negative distances, um, pretty similar. So let's zoom in here and kick this guy out another sixteen. That's looking a lot better. These are looking very even. And so now let's go ahead and do the same thing, um, which is protect all my pieces and draft the new skirt. And this is flare skirt, just like the other one is a flared skirt. It's just going to be wider, fuller, and have more flares. There we are. So for comparison, here's our other piece. And you can see it's more full. Fantastic. OK, just real quick, we talked a little bit about um, circle skirts. So I want to show you the circle skirt here. So remember that a circle skirt is kind of as much fullness as we can get in our flared skirt. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of drag out a guideline here. And this is going to give me this kind of nice right angle here. And I'm going to keep my back skirt here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to this guy here. 
and it lets me move it while it's protected. And we'll, yeah, okay, fine. Um, and I'm going to kick the side seam all the way up to that horizontal line. So that's where I want. I want that that side seam is now going to be on the cross grain. And what I want to do is sort of adjust them so this little guy is going to sit in the middle here. And again, I want to keep about these distances the same so everything is kind of even. So I'm going to rotate it out just a little bit more to keep it in the middle. Kind of that 45 degree angle coming out there. And we'll put them all up here. Boop, boop, boop. And there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and this will be our full version. Nope. Now you might be wondering, wow, this is kind of a big pattern piece. Should this be on fold? Well, that is going to entirely depend on the fabric you intend to make this skirt out of. Some skirts are not, or some fabrics are not going to be wide enough to be able to put the center front center back on fold. Um, some are, uh, especially since this is a little bit shorter. But uh, typically, when you start to get kind of longer, you know, this is still knee length, so it's not super short you get down to like half length or longer, you really are going to have to um, kind of quarter it, do a center front, center back seam, side seam, so you do have four uh, separate sections of the fabric, um, because most fabrics are not going to be wide enough to be able to uh, place it on fold. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a comparison. So here we have three different um, flared skirts, minimum amount of flare, about a middle amount of flare, and your maximum amount of flare. Okay? Now, there are, uh, I'm going to get into if you even want more fullness than what this giant, um, you know, circle skirt construction can give you. Um, we're going to get into that in the more kind of complex uh, flares and sl slash and spreads and things like that. Um, one thing I do kind of want to mention is this waistline is looking a wee bit wonky. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's fix that up. We don't want a waistline looking like that. It should look like a nice little curve, a nice little arc. Um, <laughs> not like, I don't know what that looks like. And again, whenever you are sort of, it's always good to um, delete. So whenever you have a wonky line, uh, go ahead and try deleting some of your points. Because not all of them tend to be necessary and too many can kind of make weird curves and shapes in your lines there. That looks much, much better. Um, okay, so that is... Um, how we do our flared skirt. Now, just really shortly, I'm going to show how this can also be applied to create flares um, in your skirt. I mean, we're going to focus on skirt, but this would be the same technique if you wanted to do a bell sleeve with a little flare at the end, or you want to do like little bell bottoms on pants, it would be the same. Um, or if it's dressed, you know, same, same technique. So let's make a little flounce, a little flare for this skirt. I'm going to go ahead and Let's, where should we do it? Like right there, so we have it kind of fitted, fitted, fitted to a little bit below the hip, maybe a little bit below the crotch, and then we're gonna get a nice little kind of flounce. So let's zoom in. Okay, uh, I'm gonna cut off, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the piece where I want the little flounce or ruffle to attach. Um, and it's going to be right here where this guideline is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. Okie doke. And now what I want to do is I want to cut these into sort of even strips. 
Um, I tend to like to do about three cut, like uh, two cuts to three. Um, I have seen in a lot of pattern drafting, people do a lot of different cuts, and the more cuts that you get, the fullness is sort of more evenly distributed, and, and the lines are smoother and things like that. But honestly, with the curve mechanisms in Optitex already, uh, we can we can just cut it into thirds. We can be. I don't want to say lazy, but I guess that's the right term. <laughs> so I'm going to cut it into thirds, which is going to give me a neat opportunity to show you some measurement box uh, uh, capabilities. So I'm going to hold Alt as I cut, and I'm going to cut this into thirds. So I want this to be two thirds and this to be one third. Um, so I'm going to work within the proportions down here. And so remember, as we move around like this, this is my previous, this is my next. So one third from my previous. Um, and one third is 0.33. This will, should be 0.66, but it rounded it up. It's perfectly fine. And we're gonna just cut this straight up. Again, making sure that this is a third from now my next point. Okay. Now this is going to be easy because I've already taken away one third, so I just need the middle of this to get the remaining two thirds. So we're going to split this right in the middle, so 0.5, cut down to another 0.5 proportion. Okay, so that's um, three even sections. And remember, this was my center front. So this is my center front here. That one's always going to stay on the straight of grain. So I'm only going to rotate out these guys. So I'm going to grab my rotate piece tool, and I'm going to select this corner, which is the one that matches up here, click it, and start to rotate it out. Now, of course, just like anything else, the more I rotate it out, the fuller the flounce is going to be. Um, and I'm going to try, just like the um, uh, flared skirt, I'm going to try to make sure that uh, I don't um, flip it out too much because I don't want the third strip's side seam to go past horizontal or to go past cross grain. So I'm going to go and just maybe kind of plop it there. Um, since I'm rotating it this way, it has a negative angle that just shows direction. Um, and let's do a nice negative 20. That's a nice round number. Okie doke. So that's my first rotation outward and I'm going to line it up right there and I'm going to do the same thing here but I'm going to do uh, and so instead of 20 I get 20 to make it the same and then 40 to make it another even one another even opening and you'd go up depending on how many little slashes you have like that you would just be adding up your degrees like such. Now I'm just going to zoom in and just double check I have everything lined up the way I want it to. Sometimes Optitex doesn't want to move the things the way you want it to, but if you zoom in really, really close, you'll force Optitex to do the things that you want it to do, like move little tiny spaces, like so. Okay. Now very easy, I bet you can guess the next step. That's right, we're going to protect and draft. So let's highlight all these pieces, protect it, switch to our draft tool, and draft. Nope. There we are, there's our little ruffle. Now what's gonna happen is right here, it's gonna attach to this seam right here. Of course we want our grain along the center front, of course. Um, and again, this might be one of those instances you might be like, hey, how is this curve gonna match up with this line here? It's curved. It's, totally different um, but that is where we get volume so when uh, 
back before, like when I was talking about um, in our, our sort of concepts of pattern drafting on the board, whenever you see this sort of negative shape or difference in line shape between two pattern pieces, that's signifying volume. It's signifying a change in shape. So when I see this, I see that this curved line is going to be four straight, which is going to force big kind of puffy ruffles to pop out um, away from the body. Um, that's what this negative shape should be signifying to you as a pattern maker. Um, you know, curve into straight means big flares or small flares, depending on your fabric, uh, but coming off and away from the body. Um, so just always keep that in mind and really try to, you know, remember what those negative shapes will um, look like when they're put together. That way you can look at a flat pattern and sort of visualize, uh, you know, your 3D render of the pattern in your head. So you can see this and you would know exactly what it would be doing. Okay, so this basically goes over um, what we went over on the basic dart manipulation, basic seam manipulation, and basic fullness and flares for skirts. Um, next week, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit more complicated technique uh, for the same things. Um, and our assignment for this week, of course, is going to be the mermaid draft, which takes all of these techniques and um, utilizes them in a finished pattern. Uh, and I'm going to have a step-by-step -step for the, uh, that project um, up, so check out that video. Uh, follow along with it as you create your own mermaid skirts. All right, guys, um, be safe, be well. And hopefully you guys have all been able to connect to OptiTex at this point. If not, contact IT. Don't contact me. I can't help you. And I'll see you in the mermaid skirt video. Bye-bye.